Okay. Um, calling to order the December 11th Transportation Advisory Board meeting. We can start with a roll call. Here. Board Member Bennett. Here. Board Member McInerney. Here. Board Member Kim. Here. Council Member Yarbrough. Here. And we'll note that uh, Council Member or Board Member uh, Burroughs McKee and uh, Wickland are not able to attend. <laughs> Great, and um, do we feel comfortable then doing the next item, the special election for vice chair? We do have a quorum, but do we feel as if we would like to have board member Wickland and Burroughs McKee here? Or is it McKee Burroughs? I might have screwed that up. Any thoughts on that? Board member Kim? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, I, I would prefer to push this back to next meeting. I was, um, there it goes. <laughs> yes, I was also going to say it depends. Um, I don't know how board member Bennett would feel, but I'm okay with pushing it to the next meeting whenever that is. Is there any risk to go for a month without having a vice chair? Well, chair and board member, um, I don't think so. I, I think we're, we can do this in January just as easily as, as today. So if you'd like to wait, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Sure. I'm also uh, in favor of waiting then. The only issue will be if uh, if the chair cannot make it on, uh, in January. <laughs> then we'll just wing it, I suppose. Yeah, none whatsoever, <laughs> right? Um, okay, so we'll put that off then till um, the next meeting in January. Let's move on to approving the minutes of the preceding meeting, October meeting minutes. Uh, any comments or any corrections on the minutes from any... Just a couple of minor revisions on uh, <clears throat> minutes, page 7, line 10. Make that Peer City, that's P-E-E-R, rather than Pure City. And on uh, minutes, page 8, line 1, I think the intent is to refer to a car-centric society rather than a car eccentric society. Although I, I kind of think that's an interesting uh, <laughs> term. And those are my comments. Great, so noted. Um, any other comments from any of the board members on the minutes? Can I get a motion to approve? A motion to approve the last meeting's minutes. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 So we've approved. Next would be um, Phil, communications from staff. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I was going to try to find the actual release, press release, about the corridor identification program for Front Range Passenger Rail and how that did make it onto the corridor ID program for the, nationally. I can't find the specifics. I'll be sure to send those out in a follow-up email just so that you have all the details. But we did, we, the region did get selected for the Front Range Passenger Rail section from Fort Collins down to basically Pueblo as far as moving to the next level of being able to apply for funding and get grant funding for that corridor when it's when it's ready. That doesn't mean it's going to be 
free to the public. They are they do have a district, and so the district will likely at some point. And I, I do know I have heard that the governor wants to put it on the ballot for 2024, so November 2024, next less than a year away, is uh, is when he he'd like to see it on the ballot to start funding that that district all along the Front Range. So. Uh, we're going to have to figure that out. We'll probably have some folks come in here and discuss how that's going to affect Longmont specifically, especially if we're going to continue to pay a front or a fast tracks tax, a 0.4 cent tax on fast tracks, because this will supplement fast tracks. And so we don't want to be double taxed, obviously, as a city. And I think our council members would agree with that as well. So we need to be very careful on how that moves forward. But it's a great. First step in the process, so we're very excited about that. Any questions about Front Range Passenger Rail? Not giving you a lot of details on what I know, but um, we have been working very closely with that group. And uh, I think we had them come in maybe a year and a half ago to chat with TAB, and a lot of you were not on that group. So we can have them come in again, and we've got the work program, and we've got actually we have a whole uh, one agenda item, number 10, is de dedicated to future agenda items. So let us know if you'd like us to add that uh, for a future agenda item. Secondly, we'd like to just chat. We do have a couple, quite a few updates for you today, tonight, regarding um, multimodal capital projects. So Jim's going to do that as part of the info items as a formal kind of presentation piece to this, formal. Um, so I did want to just mention that as uh, – our Vision Zero has been a pretty continuing topic for this group, and so we just did want to let you know that we are in the process. We had one interview today. We'll have three more interviews this week. So we've got a Vision Zero coordinator. Hopefully, uh, we, you know, you never know with the hiring process these days, but we're hoping that we can uh, get somebody, talk to somebody in the next, next week and do some sit-down interviews with folks and just really drill down into, uh, you know, who who gets this job. And so uh, we're, we're pretty excited because I think we have some, we have four really good prospects, and so we're excited to talk to them. And hopefully in the brand new year, we'll be able to have them come forward and sit in one of these chairs and chat with you a little bit about Vision Zero and, and the future of that, and specifically the Vision Zero Task Force. And uh, so we're soliciting any names of folks, if you do have volunteers, please send those along to me, and we'll start to uh, accumulate that list or, or, or get that list together and work on that. Otherwise, I think all the other items are from Jim tonight, so we'll uh, wait, wait to hear from some of those, and then we'll wait to hear your comments at the end from items from, uh, from, from board members, and then hopefully be able to answer any further questions you have about projects or what's been going on. I do know there's a legislative breakfast in early Jan January, but it's not free, but it's a, it's a good place if you really are interested in the politics of transportation to get a lot of the understanding of what's in the next legislative session. And if you have more questions about that, I can, I can get you linked into that as well. So do not know. <laughs> I'll let you know the cost too, but yeah, so we, we may be able to sponsor that. Jim may be able to sponsor that. It's a new budget here. Yeah. Not that Jim has a lot of money if you read the article from this weekend, but uh, he's got a few dollars hanging out. If, if, if you're really interested in the policies uh, going to the state legislature this year, it's a really good one to attend. That's all I have for right now. Thank you. Public invited to be heard. Oh. Do we want to go to public comments? Yeah. Any public here that would like to be heard? This is a different point of view. So, hello, Transportation Advisory Board. I just wanted to check in with you. Uh, I I wanted to reiterate that you have a an advocate on the Council for Transportation, and um, 
I'm sorry, I kind of rushed through traffic to get here and I've lost uh, my train of thought. Um, I had talked with uh, Council on the 5th of December about having more overlap between the Transportation Board, the um, Airport Advisory Board, and the Parks and Recreation Board. And that primarily because the Parks and Recreation Board uh, I happened to sit in on one of their meetings and they were talking about the pathways that they have through parks and how to make them more safe between pedestrians and bicyclists. And I mentioned to them that this is exactly something that we had discussed at Transportation Board. I think it might be helpful to both boards to discuss that um, in some overlapped fashion. Um, because anything we do or that you all do with bicycles is, is going to affect the pathways that they have through parks. So, so uh, I would like to encourage that type of interaction. I don't know what that would look like in the future, but I would like to explore that as an opportunity. I also wanted to report that I happened to go down I-25 um, near Firestone there, I guess where 119 goes under the bridge. And I don't know if we ever talked about this, and maybe I just missed the the presentation that you two did uh, about the bus staying and snow staying that CDOT is doing. Did you just talk about that before I walked in? Um, <laughs> and, and just that they're they're making an underpass there. I know we've had, or the Transportation Board has had people from Firestone concerned about being able to travel from Firestone into Logmont. And that that is making good progress there. It's an interesting concept. So there's going to be a hub there on the um, west side, I think, of the highway. Both sides. Yeah, well, there's a park and ride on the east side. I know that. So it will make um, communication between the two towns easier than trying to navigate the Highway 119 there. So there was one other item. I was wondering about the is before the council to talk about Rogers Road, and I'm a little concerned about the transportation there between Rogers Road and getting down to say Costco. It, it's kind of the same area down um, around 119 where it's just difficult to get through, and it's very rugged territory. So I'm just going to throw that out as something to keep on the radar. All right, nice to see you all again. Thanks for all you do. Great, thank you. Phil, I do know on the TMP, <clears throat> at least in the planning session that we had, Parks and Rec and Airport were represented, so I would imagine that any overlap might be able to be covered by the TMP and that process um, in, in the planning side of things. Yeah, that's a great point. We do include a number of board boards, including the Senior Advisory Board and the Sustainability Advisory Board. We do not include the airport advisory board. This is really a surface transportation piece, but we do include parks and rec advisory boards. So we are trying to get a pretty good cross cut of, of the city boards and commissions on this. Planning and zoning is another board we have. Um, so you are correct, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Nobody else for public comment, so Jim, I guess you can take it away now. All righty. Um, I wanted to just, uh, Chair Lehner uh, and board members, provide you a quick update on a, on a, a couple of, of um, projects. I've given you updates on these in the past, and I just wanted to keep you informed as to kind of as we get into winter, kind of some of our, our activities um, that occur um, I'm going to start off with Kaufman Street, uh, the multimodal in improvement project. Um, to date, design is complete. Um, we are currently in the process of acquiring uh, some final um, right-of-way acquisitions, uh, mostly in the form of, of some temporary construction easements and some permanent easements. And we, for that, we, we do require or CDOT, who is, well, it is not a CDOT road, uh, the IGA that we have for the, the state and federal funding is routed through CDOT, so we have an IGA with CDOT. So we need their, we follow their design um, standards. Uh, 
so we do need uh, final CDOT clearances on those, the property acquisition, prior to advertisement uh, for the bid. Jim? Yes. For anybody who wants to know, that's intergovernmental oh, I'm sorry. agreement. So what that is is when there's a state agency working with a local, they'll sign an agreement so they know who's responsible for what, who's going to do what, just so you know when he says IGA, that's what that is. And it, and it, in the city of Longmont, it's any government, other government agency that we, we work with requires uh, an IGA. Um, plan um, design, we're trying to get to uh, bid advertisement um, early January, and the plan construction start we're still holding is March 2024. Um, next project um, is... It's not on the agenda, but I'm going to throw it in anyway. Uh, Spring Gulch number two is a trail project on the east side of town. Uh, to date, they've laid about 2,900 linear feet of 10-foot wide concrete trail. That trail is currently closed to the public, uh, mainly because it doesn't go anywhere. Um, it, uh, in the middle of the project is the Great Western Railroad. Um, the controlling factor in the project is getting the underpass constructed. Um, and that really won't start. And there's a long lead time on those uh, concrete items. Uh, they have been ordered at the start of the project, and we're going into a winter shutdown. The contractor will pull off the job. Um, we anticipate bringing up in the spring when they'll have those um, that material uh, in stock. Uh, there's a precast box, concrete box culvert that has to be pre-ordered. Uh, it takes a while to, to manufacture. And that's underway, so we'll see that come up in the spring, and then hopefully by summer we'll see that trail open. And then as we get into that time frame, I'll keep you up to date on that project as well. <clears throat> but that'll provide that connection uh, down to Sandstone Ranch, kind of from the north uh, east side of, the, of town, anywhere from kind of 66 all the way across town, down to Sandstone. Um, 17th Avenue sidewalk improvements, that's a project on the north side of uh, 17th Avenue. Um, they've got almost all the concrete in place now. They should finish up the concrete work before the end of the year, and then they'll finish up in the spring when they have to do the landscaping and finish some of the irrigation work. Um, the Boston Avenue Bridge project, um, they are on schedule and no change orders have been needed to date. They are working on the south side of the bridge. They've demoed half the bridge and they're starting to work on their caissons uh, for the bridge pilings. Um, part of that work included the relocation um, at Boston to South Francis. That work has been completed. They've got most of South Francis open now, uh, doing a little more drainage work, but that project is continuing to move forward. Uh, part of that project involves the continued detour of the St. Varane Trail. Uh, we've worked with Parks and Rec um, and added uh, some additional signing. Um, I believe we also had just, working with BNSF, redid the crossing of Bowen. Um, we'd had some uh, concrete failures, as asphalt failures there, so we just redid that working with BNSF to make that, that uh, trail crossings a little bit, a little bit better improved. And we added some additional signing down in Boston as well. To, uh, and we're still waiting for a couple more signs. We're going to put in some flashing, not RFBs, but some flashing crosswalk signs to accentuate that uh, uh, area on a temporary basis. And then Main Street, when you do that one? Yep, no. So a um, couple of updates on Main Street and some of the improvements they've been working on there. Um, you're where we've uh, we installed the RRFBs. We brought that to your attention a, a few meetings ago. We continue to monitor those to see that the timings are working for uh, people, elderly people who cross a little slower, uh, and we adjust accordingly. Um, we have been working on upgrading the traffic signals uh, for a changeover from our adaptive signal systems. So we have put in new cameras from Pike Road all the way to Sixth Avenue. Uh, we're waiting for equipment to come in for 7th and 9th. Uh, when we get 7th and 9th completed, we're working with our other vendor to get the new system up and running. So we're looking at the first quarter of next year. Um, and the main reason for, for the upgrades is that that will allow us to adjust some of the cross traffic and the pedestrian crossings to add more time to those um, on an individual basis versus going uh, 
um, basically working with the vendor who has to go in and make the change, the city can, staff can do that. Uh, that's in addition that the old adaptive signal system was failing. Uh, the processors are good for about five to six years and we've started to see those and have to replace them. Um, and they're about 20 grand a pop. So we've had to do um, several dozen this, this year and it was unexpected. So, um, but that works ongoing. Um, as we get into next year, we'll be proceeding up uh, Main Street um, from 9th Avenue all the way up to north of Main, north of 66. Uh, hope that by the end of next year, we'll have that completed and then up and running as well. Um, once that is completed, we're going to start on 119 um, and then get in onto Hover and re replace the adaptive signal systems on those two corridors. Uh, I do have a question, actually, on the adaptive signal. <laughs> and Kyle, you know, it's probably directed to you. So I'm just curious, because um, I've seen some projects on adaptive signal control, and what we're seeing is increased pet activity. Mm -hmm. And as you know, pet activity can cause a lot of transition, mm -hmm. um, even in an adaptive environment. So how, how does the system compensate for the pet calls that are going to come in, uh, especially on Main Street, because you're going to have a lot of cross pets as opposed to along the mainline pits. I'm just curious if, if that's something that's definitely going to be addressed in, in this adaptive. Yeah, and that's uh, one of our main reasons of upgrading the system. Um, our current adaptive system, um, how it functions is if a there's a pedestrian call on um, the side streets, it'll actually short cycle the greens and uh, arrows for the rest of the cycles. And so usually the driver here is a little less <clears throat> happy. Um, this new system um, it allow, allows us to segment the adaptive system network a bit better, so we can really truncate it for uh, 119 um, as you're going up Main Street through the more wider areas uh, where you get less pedestrian traffic. Um, you can make it a little more rigid, uh, but as you get through our Main Street area or we have more pedestrian activity, um, it allows us to add or deduct time from the cycles to adjust those um, periods. So if there is a call on multiple signals, it can adjust the entire network together versus signal by signal because um, once you call one signal, it'll actually disrupt the entire um, link for a few seconds until it can get back on track. Um, so that's kind of why the current system isn't very pedestrian friendly because it was more made for vehicles. Um, this newer one is made for multiple modes of traffic, buses, um, but also it remains in our control. So our current system actually locks us out of our controllers that control the system. Um, so it's very hard for myself to make edits to um, see what traffic's doing. It usually takes weeks and a lot of money to do this through a third party company. This new system will allow me to make changes very fast and reactive and be able to see that in real time and really understand how it's functioning and why it does function the way it does. A lot of the, generally to the processors is just a black box that just tells me, yep, I'm gonna turn it now, I'm gonna turn it now, I'm gonna turn it now. This new one will show me the entire plan for the entire day. So that's kind of where we're heading that direction. So that was kind of the, the, the projects I wanted to, to bring to your attention. Um, as we move to the next item, which is the end of year report and our 2024 work plan, um, I just want to bring up that as we plan for some of our work for next year, uh, we do anticipate bringing that um, forward to TAB before um, it kind of gonna get gets released and goes to construction. Um, that mostly will involve our uh, rehab program. Um, there are a number of corridors we have that we're going to be attacking next year, where we're going to be looking to to change the existing striping around uh, for more multimodal, uh, adding more multimodal facilities. Um, so we want to, uh, as we kind of present that, get that approved by the city manager, we're going to bring that forward to TAB to, to let you guys know kind of what our activities are uh, in that realm. Um, we do that pretty much almost every year, um, whether it's a, a complete rebuild or a, 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 a rehab or a chip seal. An example of chip seals, we did ninth, we did third. Uh, but we're looking at those corridors now, um, planning those those areas out. Sometimes it's only block by block, but it it it's it's gets us to to build the network for, for bikes. Um, and with that I'll turn it back over to Phil to talk about the work. Any questions? Yeah, questions. 
I had a quick one. So on the restriping, is there any talk about in regards with Vision Zero of any sort of road diets, or would that be something that would be completely separate from this discussion? Well, we're looking at one road for a road diet. It's South Fordham in one block section. Um, it's a three-lane section right now, so we'd be looking kind of when we restripe it. It's mostly all commercial traffic. There's no residents in the area, and there's limited driveways. Um, so we're looking at that road and say, hey, can we do a road diet here? It's got substandard bike lanes now, I believe. So we're looking if we eliminate the center turn lane and you know add wider lanes but still have room for buffered bike lanes. That's We're going to be coming in with a striping plan to show just that. Um, that's That's one of the ones that comes to mind. Uh, we're looking at a striping plan on Gay Street and what we may want to do there. Uh, and then there's a couple of uh, miscellaneous roads with just one block or two in the downtown area we're looking at as well. That's not next year. Good evening again. I actually uh, need to amend part of this discussion, we really need the 2023 TAB annual report to be an action item. So we will request action tonight on that item, just as a, uh, this is a recommendation you make to city council so that they can see your work program and see what you accomplished this year. So I'll just go through the list really quickly and then just ask for, for that motion. I think that's possible with this format even though it's not it wasn't on the agenda so I'm a little concerned about that piece of it but um, let's try to do it that way and if if there's a mistake we'll bring it back to you in January and we'll redo it but te technically you as a transportation advisory board held nine regular meetings in 2023 that includes tonight's and the following annual work activities were brought to TAB you've seen this list uh, we had the regional electric vehicle plan presented by one of our staff members from our sustainability group. Third Avenue striping and signage plan. We actually had a pretty interesting meeting where we talked about that with the public. It was almost a public meeting more than a, it was a public TAB meeting, I guess. Vision Zero resolution recommendation to city council. So you did make that resolution to city council and they did adopt that uh, at their follow-up meeting. Status update on microtransit funding and options. We talked about how that was possibly coming to town and now we have some more partnership dollars from RTD on that. So we are moving forward in the next year to bring microtransit, which is gonna be a basically a more formalized Uber or Lyft system uh, for all of Longmont, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. We're gonna put the RFP out uh, in January and I'll certainly, we'll keep you up to date on what happens with all that as well. Appointment of TAB member to the transportation mobility planning effort. Uh, you've heard about that. Congratulations, Chair Lehner, <laughs> on that one. Vision Zero work session. We did spend a lot of time on Vision Zero, and thanks to former board member Christ for a lot of that work. Um, subcommittee to interview new TAB applicants. We do this every um, May, so we'll be doing this again. We have an open position, which will be filled at, in a July council meeting, but we'll have to start in May to get those uh, get those applicants reviewed and, and we'll do that again in, in May. Uh, transportation mobility plan process update, the 2022 capital improvement program update, staff presentation and discussion, uh, and thanks to Jim for the, for the follow-up update on some of those projects today. Reviewing comments on public works, natural resources, back when they used to be called public works and natural resources operational budget, now they're just public works. I hope that's correct. Work plan and annual report, here we are doing that again. So, um, an annual board elections of new chair and vice chair, pretty basic, we wanna do that again in, now in January, get a, a vice chair elected. Um, so, RTD update, we do that every, every year. And I would be certainly willing to hear from board members on what they think about that effort. Some of you were not here, but uh, it would be interesting to hear if, hear if the board does want to know more about other agencies and what they're doing as far as, um, you know, the flex bus. We, we've kind of pushed that off a little bit because their, their data, even though it's more robust, is there's not a lot of, there's a lot of riders, but there's not a lot in Longmont. So it's more of a regional system. When we talk to RTD, we get a very much Longmont-centric update on what's going on with ridership and impacts 
and trains and all the good stuff, you know, from all the different things that we're worried about with RTD and with Flex, it is just that continuation of the bus and um, not much changes. So we've kind of kept them at bay a little bit, but let me know if you wanted to hear any more items, if there's anything that interests you about surface transportation specifically. Um, and we can, we can kind of delve into how we bring that up in 2024. Um, the proposed 2023-2027 CIP, so the proposed one for the next, for the upcoming year, so that probably should say 2024 to 2028 CIP. Um, and the 2018 to 2022 high crash location summary, and we had that at our October meeting. So with that, we would um, entertain any questions that you have for staff regarding that, that update. But we'd also ask for a motion that uh, the board approve the 2020 three annual report. And that's all I have for that. I can start with you, board member Kim, if you have any questions. No, no questions. When I read the, the minutes from the board's last meeting, which I was not able to attend, I think my name was advanced as a possible person to continue with the TMP planning process. But did I understand that you're taking on that role? Okay, just wanted to clarify that. We asked you, uh, Board Mac Member McInerney, to do the evaluation of the of the different consulting firms so Proposed. thank you for your help on that we didn't add that into our list that's another achievement or accomplishment for the year that uh, you helped on that be on that board we really appreciate your time on that but then when it came back to who's going to represent the board on the TMP uh, I think chair Laner stepped up and and said he'd like to do that but no, you may have been you may have been gone <laughs> during that one so uh, we we put you down as the alternate to cover for, for Chair Lehner when he is unable to be there or if he uh, if, if he becomes a council member of, or something similar. So um, okay. we do have that, we do have that provision that we did add you as an alternate because all the other boards wanted to have two people and we, we can only have one from each board. So we asked that they have the other person be the alternate. So knowing that you were interested in the consultant selection piece of that, we added you as the alternate to that board or to, to that uh, transportation mobility plan effort. And are the uh, alternates invited to attend the steering committee meeting? They are invited to attend, Got but it. we're asking that they not um, maybe sit at the table or, or participate in all the discussions. We're trying to keep that as a smaller group, but we have asked that the other people attend and we've asked that the primary member stay in contact with their alternate to keep them up to date on what's going on. So if they do have to slide in there for kind of emergency, they're not just coming in cold. Understood. Have the meetings been scheduled? I know there will be quarterly meetings of the steering committee. We do not have specific dates yet set, but we will. Those are coming up pretty soon. We've, we've had some snafus with uh, contracting. And so we just, uh, we were hoping to get the contract going in early, well, the first thing in November. And it's the first thing in December now. So unfortunately, we've had to wait on that. Okay, thanks for the update. The only thing that I see that might be missing, but maybe it just doesn't count because it wasn't actually at a TAB meeting, was the transportation um, summit, the Sustainable Transportation Summit. Um, I since members attended is that something that you would add to the list yeah that's a great addition thank you of course yeah i just had um on the rtd update and talking about the light rail as well as the um, brt and kaufman street rtd is involved of course with the brt and the kaufman street but they're not engaged at all on this rail transit funding and, and, and all that that's going on with that, are they? Just to the point of being engaged 
with the idea that this could be a substitution for what they were planning for fast tracks. So this could cover, you know, quite frankly, I'm trying to be as frank as possible, but it's, it does help them fulfill that promise that was fast tracks. Okay. Um, and I didn't know, because it, it seemed like with RTD only coming in once a year, do we feel like that's enough? I know that their schedule's quite busy. Um, do, would we warrant having them twice a year, partly because of the activity that we have with these various kind of pieces? And we can offer to them and to you as a board, you know, if you want to hear about transit ridership, that could be one meeting. If you want to hear about rail, which is kind of in its own, it's in a different level of participation. We could have them come more often for that. Twice yeah. a year, like I, you said. I would be open to, to looking at that, although I know this is part of the just what we've done this year, but for the future, on the, I know we're going to talk about the work plan. <clears throat> and it may be interesting to have front range passenger rail come once a year, just huh. to kind of get that update as well. I think it's a good idea. So we would then, uh, you're requesting that we re we've reviewed, we've discussed, and we want to approve this annual report. Is that correct? With the amendments that have been put in. I put in the Transportation Mobility Plan Consultant Selection piece of that, and then I also put in the Sustainable Transportation Summit participation. And so with those two amended, uh, we'd appreciate a motion to approve the work plan. Okay. If I could get a motion to approve. A motion to approve the Transportation Advisory Board um, yearly plan. Second. Second. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Passed. Great. Thank you very much. And then we'll move on to the 2024 proposed work plan, which is more of a, this is more of an information item and in what we'll do is we want to introduce this tonight and then bring it back to your January meeting for action so you can formally approve it in January after you've... This one, this one is more about what do you want to see as the work program in 2024. We've put together the work program, basically just taken the 2023 work program and amended it here. Uh, there's some things that probably fall out like the transportation mobility plan in number two under Envision Longmont and Multimodal Transportation Implementation Plan. That's probably more than just a quarter one piece. That's going to come to you quite a few times in 2024, at least three times in 2024. Also under number four other, there's Vision Zero and just quarter three and local micro transit model Q4. Those probably also become much more. Um, an as-needed item, and we'll we'll come to you often with those, just because Vision Zero is it's going to be such a hot topic, and it is today, and it's going to become more of a hot topic in 2024. The micro transit piece is probably going to be implemented in the first quarter, hopefully, or maybe second quarter of 2024. So at that point, it'll be kind of an ongoing thing. We can report out stats and different data points for you, so you understand um, if it's working or not, and report and and give us some feedback as staff on what our next step should be and what you see in that program. So local micro transit model, that, that may be Q4, but I uh, almost want to think of that as more of an ongoing item. But, and there may be something that you're thinking about that's not on this list, and that's certainly something we'd want to hear about as well, either tonight or in the January meeting, your, your option on that. So uh, if you want to bring amendments to the January meeting, uh, Certainly, that'll be open to the board for discussion and, and consideration. I can go through this list if you like, but I think it's pretty straightforward. It is really just for your perusal at this point, and the idea that you take this home and do some homework over the next month and just let us know what you think is important. Um, and if you want to hear more about other things, let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Okay, it looks like we've covered our information items and the one action item. Um, I'll start with uh, Board Member Bennett with uh, any comments 
and any additions or anything that you'd like to add? Nothing's coming to mind, uh, although I would say I'm very excited to for the opportunity to speak with the Front Range Passenger Rail. I think that would be a great opportunity. And given our increased partnership with uh, RTD, I would love to have um, hear from them twice in the year as well. I have one suggestion for an, uh, a future board meeting agenda, and that would be to invite a city representative from Snow and Ice Control Operations to attend a TAB meeting. And uh, at that time, we would discuss how the municipal transportation policy of putting pedestrians and transit riders first will be put into practice during snow events. Um, <clears throat> I don't have really many questions or comments other than I want to echo uh, board member Bennett and say I would look forward to more R RTD meetings uh, to just finally, you know, get to meet them for the first time and maybe pick their brains about some other questions I've had for them. Um, but really appreciate all the updates. Thank you guys. Um, I just want to add um, exciting news on the um, grant on the light rail. Um, and I do think light rail should maybe end up being a little bit more of a component that we do discuss on an ongoing basis as opposed to if it's once a year or what have you. Um, and that's really about it. Good work on, on all this uh, other items that you brought forward. Um, Councilperson Yarborough. Thank you, Chair. Um, just want to say I echo what everyone, all the suggestions, especially the snow and um, having the city employees to come in and talk to us about the process and um, how do they prioritize because we get a lot of emails in the wintertime and I mean, we keep redirecting people and um, it seems like a lot of times they're not satisfied with you know, you know that <laughs> they're not really satisfied as to um, why, you know, the it's not plowed a, as often as it should be, or maybe because they're in the cold and just certain situations. And um, I think that's a really good idea because I know, um, well, I don't know, I'm not the, I don't know, but we may get a lot of snow next year. And so, I think if we can kind of, it would be great for me to actually hear them speak and I can even, you know, address some of the emails and concerns of the community that have brought up to me about they feel like they're not, you know, getting their areas um, taken care of as much, whether it's the street or whether it's a cove, um, situations like that. So thanks for bringing that up. I like that. Um, and... Um, everything else, yeah, congratulations um, uh, about, you know, the grant and everything. We, we love to have money to get these projects done, um, although we do know that having some money is not enough all the time, you know, especially now with prices going up on everything and then waiting forever in a year. Um, to get those items that we need to complete a project. So I do understand and know that, but that's why we continuously looking, always looking for grant money. Um, and that's why I appreciate, you know, you all looking at many different grants. I will say that I went to NLC in Atlanta 
And um, I'm always so proud of our our city of Longmont and our transportation, our, our departments, everything, because when I boast about what we're doing, um, other cities are like writing every these ideas down <laughs> and like, make sure you give me your card because I may be emailing you, asking you for stuff. And I'm like, you don't want to ask me, but, um, but it's, it, every time I go to these conferences, I'm so proud of, of our staff and I mean, you all to help bring those ideas to staff um, to make, you know, to implement the ideas that are needed and what you see in our community. So it's so important. I just want to say, continues to say thank you um, for being considerate, not just of what you see every day, but thinking about, thinking outside the box, what would happen if that was my grandmother or mother or my child on the bike or a pedestrian or whatever, and, and, th and considering that and bringing that forth in this meeting. So I appreciate you all for everything you do. Um, so the micro transit was a big hit in Atlanta. So I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to people in D.C. in March. I don't know if you're going to NLC Congressional. Are you going, Phil? Jim? At the same time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So hopefully I can also f see if there's more funding for something like that, too. I, I will say this, and then I'll be quiet, but a lot of times um, when we go to these conferences and we're already doing the work, so in a sense, it almost feels like we're being penalized because we're ahead of the game. And for those who hadn't even conjured up the idea of a resolution for some of those, these problems, um, they're getting all the funding. And so since we're already doing the, some of this work, we don't get the money. And so... You know, so I don't know. We got to be strategic. I don't know how we could be strategic in that way. But um, I just want to let you know that a lot of times that's why we, we, we won't even qualify because we're already doing the work. And it's for those municipalities that are so far behind that they're trying to figure it out. So thank you for making me look good when I go to these conferences. <laughs> um, you all are amazing and continue to... You know, just disclose what's in your thoughts and, and what you see in the community because it does make a difference. So, thank you. You might want to ask for a finder's fee. <laughs> I think that about wraps it up. We can go ahead and uh, get a motion to close our meeting for tonight. Just one item. I just wanted to make sure that for proposed or upcoming agendas we show that we're going to do the proposed work plan for 2024 in January and then I'll work with RTD and Front Range Passenger Rail to see if I can get one of those groups to come and update us on the peak service study which is the commuter rail passenger rail piece that they're talking about and maybe give this group an update on that or and or Front Range Passenger Rail they may both want to come so we'll just find out how that looks in their schedules thank you um, Phil, just to clarify some crystal on it, what exactly are you asking the board to do regarding the 2024 plan? Oh, so for for now, it's just basically I've handed out homework. And so if you can just take a look at that and make sure it, and we should probably do something to make it a little bit more simpler to read, but we talked about doing that and we, uh, that, we weren't sure how to make it more readable, but it's it's kind of it's kind of tough. Yeah, the text could be bigger. We could eliminate some items. So, any ideas that you have as a transportation advisory board that you want to bring to the next meeting and just kind of help us help you, kind of thing, where we scratch some things off, maybe that don't really apply anymore. If you think, hey, you know what, we don't really need to hear about this, or hey, there's something on there's something not on here that we'd like to see you talk. We'd like to hear more about. This item, like snow and ice, is not is a new one for us. Like that's a for downtown and for the for most of the trails, that's a parks and a park item that they take care of. So we're going to work with parks, and maybe that's a joint meeting that we have with the PRAB, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, and talk about that with with those folks because our streets folks did a wonderful job clearing the streets. Um, 
but they are not part of the group that clears trails, sidewalks, and those kind of things. So there's a disconnect, and we just need to get that together and, and, and have those people, if you want to hear from them, come to one of those meetings, or maybe it is a Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Maybe Q4, session. Q1? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right before and right during, <laughs> yeah, the snow events. And it will be something that we talk about with the transportation mobility plan as well. When we, as board member McInerney talked about, we flip the, flip the paradigm a little bit and talk about pedestrians as that higher priority and the transit riders. Thanks. This is a little bit out of order, but was the uh, traffic safety fund report supposed to be included in tonight's agenda? We typically do that. You'll see that in the um, on the uh, on the actual work plan where we talk about that in um, Q2. Q2. Yes. So we feel like we've done that. We we're trying to get a head start on it, but at this point, we're just going to do it with our regular timing because we have to report up to council by June um, of every year. And so we'll just bring that up to you in probably May timeframe and run it by you before we take it to, directly to city council. What were the funds allocated for in 2023? Mostly those funds were allocated for, um, we had a half-time employee, Lauren Greenfield, who, who runs a, a bike safety program. And she every week she has two groups of riders, kind of a, lower level and then a higher level of rider and she trains them basically takes them on rides to train them throughout the city on how to ride safely and she gets a pretty good turnout so um, we'll have to I know she's got some different plans for 2024 so we're gonna try to work with her schedule and figure out what we can do for that for those kind of trainings next year but I think as that starts to devolve into something, if that starts to move out of the training piece, that money will be going to the uh, Vision Zero coordinator as far as education items that we'll need to do and probably a lot of comm communication teams effort on that as well. So we're looking at how that, how that kind of transitions. It's a $5 per ticket uh, fee that, that is charged and it goes into this fund to help people become more safe and aware on the roads. Now on in all modes. How much money are you talking about? I don't know. I guess I could go ahead and uh, motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.